Welcome to the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Raw and uncut, Jiggy Jag, you know how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Keep it all the way live. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a no idea. <laughs> I love I didn't that. know you were a term, but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now. 267-22-Jiggy. Hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? You must be that uh, David Bowie song. Jiggy, break guitar. Jeff, it's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and, uh, you know, you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my tricks up there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It is the world famous. Big broadcast. It is your bonus edition. We decided with the Rush Limbaugh news, we would do a Saturday edition of the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio broadcast. If you're listening to us on the stream, well, you know, I just lied to you. But (laughs) if you're listening to us on the podcast, well, I probably just lied to you too. (laughs) But it is... A special bonus episode of the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio broadcast. So we are going to do this. We are going to go to our panel, the great Don Mazzella, the fantastic IQ Rizzoli. Yes, that IQ Rizzoli. And, uh... Actually, we'll do this. We'll do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go over here. Let's edit the group, as they say. Edit the group. We're going to remove that. We're going to remove that. And I'm just going to call these guys. We're just going to do this. (laughs) I am just going to try to do this. I'm going to ring the group. And then if you ring the group, the group picks up. There we are. I think we got everybody. Look at that. Diamond Don Mazzella in the building. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, I believe IQL Rizzoli will join us here in just a few moments if he's not already on the line. And um, I'm also going to bring in our guest for the first uh, 30 minutes here. We will see if I can... I'm getting all sorts of shenanigans on the... I should never enabled Twitter notifications on my damn phone. (laughs) As now this thing just rings constantly. So, uh... (laughs) Nice to know that you're popular. (laughs) Well, there we go. (laughs) So, uh... Well, I have have a PR person who, uh, who... sent out a press release of a guest that we're going to have on the Sunday show. So every place on the planet that she has access to is (laughs) is dinging me on Twitter. (laughs) So, uh, you know, there is that. But uh, IQ, how are you, sir? I know IQ's on. He can't hear me, apparently. I know he's there. I see the wall. <laughs> or whatever he's shooting. I don't know what that is. Leave your name. Ah, okay. No Ed Herman, apparently. So we will uh Okay. Well, um, so let's try let's see if we can get Josh on for the first thirty here. We'll see what happens. Since our since our next thirty is gonna be kind of interesting. <laughs> Uh, if if things go the way that I think they're going to go, and no, it is not a crazy uh, liberal uh, to to, uh, to to make IQ not not crazy. By the way, can you hear me? I've got you now, my friend. I can hear you just fine. You are uh, as always loud and clear. IQ Al Rizzoli. Hi, Josh. How are you? I am good. How are you? Still alive, and thank God I can see Don Mazella. <laughs> hey, hey Josh, I got the song for your your campaign. Um, High Hope by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm being very serious. Um, you know, 
like it won an Oscar, and uh, <laughs> and, and uh, it talks about um, uh, always doing things I think we got that too. people say are impossible. Maybe. Yep. And uh, uh, I I was listening to this song the other day, and I thought of you. Anyway, that's my thought of the day. <laughs> that's, that's your thought for the day. We've got uh, Don Mazzella with us today from SB Digest. We have the great Josh Bernstein as well from JoshBernsteinUncensored.com. And uh, IQR Rizzoli, of course. Uh, well, IQ is one of, the most, uh, da- uh, one of the most dangerous men in the world. He, he can't be photographed or shown anywhere. And uh, I think we've got our guest as well. Uh, Ed, can you hear us, my friend? I can hear you, yeah. Sorry, thank you, guys. I'm sorry I had some trouble getting to you, but I can hear you great. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we've got you. We've got you. Yeah. We we have got a uh, great guest to uh, kick off our uh, broadcast day here. And uh, yesterday, uh, Rush Limbaugh passed away. And uh, we have got Ed Martin with us today from the Eagle Forum um he of course knew both uh the the head of the eagle forum phyllis schlafly who had been on this program many a times wonderful woman and uh also he knew rush as well and uh i'll I'll start with i'll start with our guest ed uh, give give us your thoughts and feelings on uh on rush limbaugh and then i'll let the uh, panel jump in there and ask you some questions well, thank you. Yeah, you know, um, Rush Limbaugh is, of course, a Missourian, so I'm from Missouri, too, as was Phyllis Schlafly, and so we had a great relationship with the Limbaugh family. It's an iconic family, actually. Long before Rush was famous, it was a famous Missouri family. A- amazing lawyers, great conservatives. Phyllis Schlafly was great friends with Millie, uh, uh, Millie uh, Limbaugh, Rush's mom. Uh, she was an early eagle and worked with Phyllis on conservative issues. So we know the family and uh, extraordinary family, wonderful people. It's a great loss. Look, I mean, Rush Limbaugh was he was a transformative figure. I say I say Goldwater begat Reagan. Reagan gave us uh, 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 Limbaugh because once Reagan was gone, there was no successor to Reagan. He faded and didn't continue. L- uh, Reagan did. Limbaugh became the icon. You know, Gingrich comes out of what what was co- consolidated by uh, by Limbaugh, and all of it leads to. If if Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh was the greatest entertainer who led conservatives, you know, people towards conservatism, the most obvious entertainer who became a politician in our history is Donald Trump. They both knew how to communicate to the masses and entertain them and, and get attention on what they were doing, and they were masterful. So, look, Limbaugh will go down as one of the iconic figures in American life, uh, as big as uh, Mark Twain and, and, you know, politically as important as uh, – as any of the commentators of the of the 20s, 30s, and 40s. So it's a big loss. Now the only voice in this country now, the biggest voice, the entertainer-in-chief, uh, is Donald yep. Trump. And it's his party, it's his movement, and we'll see what happens. So I'll start with Josh. Uh, Mr. Bernstein. Well, uh, Jump first in. off, uh, Phyllis Shafley was an incredible woman. I had her on my show, I don't know, a half a dozen times. She was always delightful, very intelligent very smart, uh, and she fought right to the end. She was a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, I put out a statement here recently um, on uh, the death of Rush Limbaugh, so I'm just going to read it because it's kind of the way that I talk and the way that I write things. So, The original truth teller, that's who he was, and unfortunately he has passed. The greatest conservative broadcaster of all time, El Rushbo, has left us today, leaving a legacy that will never be surpassed. Nobody was as intelligent, nobody was as passionate and steadfast in breaking down the psychology of the left than Rush Limbaugh. His fortune-telling, spidey-like sense was unmatched in right-think-speak. Nobody knew the left's playbook better than him, including the liberals who wrote it. He was our master general. He was just as important to America's freedom and success as Generals George Washington or Generals George Patton were. The EIB is now RIP, and every American's life is better off because of Rush. Uh, Rush worked. Uh, Rush's work now continues as one of God's newest and most important angels. He will now be tasked with watching over the country that he loved and dedicated his life to saving. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family and everyone who has been influenced, touched by, and educated by this incredible patriot who performed daily miracles with half of his brain 
tied behind his back. Rush was the true goat of conservative talk, and his talent will never be duplicated. God rest his soul. We will pick up the fight from here. Amen. Wow. Well, well I, have, uh, that's great. I, got no, I got nothing to add to that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a bad about captures it. I agree with every bit of that. Well, yeah. I, only, uh, I only argue with one thing. <laughs> you put the word conservative before him. I just thought, um, uh, I thought he was a great commentator. And uh, again, coming from my school of thought, um, uh, from where I was uh, brought up, I, I thought that, um, yes, he espoused uh, conservative ideas, but uh, really, if you listen to him a lot of times, he was just talking plain common sense, which I think uh, is really missing in today's uh, dialogue. Uh, yeah. No question about it. You know, one of the gifts that he had was he was able to basically articulate and break down the left, and any time the drive-by media, his phrase that he coined, would come out and they would say whatever it was, whatever sound bite that he was playing, he would then show that they were all saying the same thing. But then he would break it down further and say, this is not exactly what they mean. They're saying this, but this is what they truly mean behind what they're saying. And oh, by the way, he would be able to forecast their next move all the time. And he did it every single day. He was such an intellect such a deep thinker, somebody that really could uh, forecast what was going to happen and how the left was going to react in certain circumstances, how they were going to go about governing with policies. He would be able to show you a blueprint. But most importantly, he was also able to engage the listener to a point to make them think, but also to educate them on how to defeat whatever it is that the left was trying to accomplish. He truly was an innovator in, in conservative media and talk. And uh, again, as I said earlier, I don't think anyone is going to even come close to being able to replace him. No. Do you see they're going to continue the show until, quote, uh, his audience gets tired of it? Yes. I, uh, I, 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 that snide I, remark from the New York Times? I kind of imagined that what would happen as far as radio went because radio is such a lazy industry <laughs> i gotta figure that what they would do is they would just play his archive forever <laughs> i nominated you you and josh to take it over <laughs> alex jones will get the spot before i do <laughs> we'll just we'll just leave it at that uh, although too much truth i don't think they want me <laughs> But uh, I need somebody like you, Josh. I would do it. Hey, if they asked me, I would do it. <laughs> you know, In a heartbeat, of course. Well, Josh, you, you know, apparently what they're going to do is use guest commentators yeah. for the next three or four months. Why don't you uh, put yourself out there? Hey, I would love to. Whoever uh, the powers that be, if this gets out, I would absolutely be delighted to do it. Well, I would you can't. The truth you, you... every single day. And I'll be politically incorrect. I'll be professional, <laughs> but I'll be politically incorrect. That's for sure. Well, I'm, no, I'm being very serious, Josh. They, 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 they are going to take commentators from all over. So, you, you know, the, I, I forget what the, the group is, but they're, they're going to take anybody they can for the next couple of months. If I were you, I'd do it. I can't because of my commitment. I, I, again, I would, I would love to do it. Um, I don't know who I would get in contact with, but um, if you have I'll any of that you, information, let me know. Gonna, I'll tell you in a second. So, so Ed, um, what now that now that Phyllis Schlafly, of course, has passed away, and so has Rush Limbaugh. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, is Donald Trump the uh, the last oh, man standing? Yeah. Essentially. Well, look, I think no, I, I think a bit more than that. I think it's um to be clearer than that. Um, you know, Donald Trump transformed the Republican Party. Uh, the people that think there's a debate in the Republican Party about which direction are they're they're naive or they're simplistic or they're in denial. Um, the reality is the reality is it's Donald Trump's party. Twenty percent of the party is not Donald Trump. They're in office, Mitch McConnell, Liz Cheney, but it's a little bit. Um, 
it's a little bit like Reagan. You can stay in the party at, at the time of Reagan if you were, uh, you know, in fact, he put some of the he put some of the Bushies and some of the Ford people in his administration, but it's still his party. And same thing with Trump. The direction now is America first. It's much more uh, it's much more aimed at at protecting our nation and our people. I like to tell people that uh, Trump was is the captain of Team America. If you're on Team America, meaning you're an American, you like it. He's on your side. If you're not an American, you may not be as happy because he's not going to come go necessarily light on you. So that's the reality. The people like Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell, his speech on the floor of the Senate after the impeachment was aimed at his constituency of 49. The 49 senators, he was trying right. to keep them on his side. He's not a national politician. He's a he's a he's a caucus manager. Very very good at it, by the way. He'll, as long as he's alive, he'll be around in that position, in my instinct. So, but look, Trump is in charge. The party is now his. And as you point out, there's not even a Rush Limbaugh. Until Rush died, Rush would have been the biggest conservative, to use the phrase loosely, as you point out, you know, center-right leader. And, uh, and now it's all Trump. So the question becomes, as long as he's alive and wants to be involved, Trump, in a meaningful way, What's the form that takes? You know, does he does he start to, uh, a media company? I doubt it. Does he do a radio show? No way. Uh, I, so, you know, what does it become? I think I think he is going to look for 50 years. Donald Trump has been a national media figure. The tabloids in New York and then across the country. Remember, USL, USFL football, all that. Then on TV and The Apprentice and then politics. He's going to find a way to be a national figure, and we're going to have to see what that is. But the 2022 election is going to be an interesting test because when Trump wasn't on the ballot in 2018, it didn't matter that he said to his people vote. They didn't care enough. They, they, they just were. But it's going to be interesting if Trump can get his people to see in, like, say, beating the Pelosi House as what they need to do. If they do, I, I think he's going to be, you know, back in sort of charge in terms of to get the House. And I, it looks like Biden is going to help him. I don't think, you know, after that, I don't think we know uh, what he's going to do. He's, a, by the way, he's a consummate finger in the wind guy in the in, in terms of politics. He almost ran for president five or six times. He's going to he's going to assess what his likelihood of winning is and making money and making an impact, and he's going to do it. But I mean, right now. There's nobody like him in the world, and frankly, in human history, there's never been anybody like what he commands. Yeah. 78, 74 million people voted for him. Um, that's more, you know, there's 84. only 54 million. Well, whatever the number, the real number is probably 100, 100 million. But but it's but there's, there's, there's only there's, there's only 50 there's only 50 plus million people in the UK or in England. There's only 80 million in in uh, in Germany, right? I mean, this is a dramatic. And, and by the way, one time at, at, during this, this sort of stop the steal run up, which I was involved in, I interviewed on a Japanese TV station. And by the time I got back to my desk on social media, I was getting thousands of interactions from the Japanese who love Trump because they recognize a, a kind of guy that's on, you know, I, I joke with them. I say Japan first for them. That's yeah. what they don't want. <laughs> they don't want globalism. They want their right. nation. And so he's a world figure. The question is, uh, what's that look like in the next year or two or, and beyond? Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'd love to answer. <laughs> Don, go. <laughs> then I'll let IQ jump in there. Uh, no, because uh, I wish President Trump would go home. Uh, okay? I really do. And uh, allow. Uh, uh, I know Jackson and I have differences in that. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm going to get my shot in, and after that, he can take over. But uh, I, I, I really do, do feel that if Trump interferes on a 22 election in any way, shape, or form, outside of begging his uh, uh, pe people to go to the polls, he, uh, we will see a repeat of, of uh, 20. I, I really believe he has got to leave the field and bring, let new people in. So, IQ Al Rizzoli, uh, sitting here listening to our guest, Ed Martin, from the Eagle Forum. Of course, our good friend Josh Bernstein from JoshBernsteinUncensored.com. Don Mazzella, SB Digest. What, what, what do you have to add to the conversation there, IQ? Well, simple. Whenever I came to the United States of America, I listened to Rush Limbo, believe it or not. The guy from Iraq 
the, uh, the person IQ who is not an American citizen is more American than the American citizen. <laughs> At least the majority of them anyway. At least 80 million who voted for Biden. They're not American citizens, they're stupid animals. <laughs> With all due respect. <laughs> With all due uh, respect, of course. Huh, how do you really feel? <laughs> yeah, tell us how you really feel, their IQ. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Josh, Josh Bernstein doesn't miss his words. Why should I miss mine? <laughs> when the piece of, yeah, listen to me. Honestly, listen to this. When the piece of garbage <laughs> of a Muslim woman in Congress calls the President of the United States of America, motherfucker, yeah. I said at the time, I can say whatever I want, and if anybody <laughs> says and anything, get away with it. Me, I will literally cut their head off. I don't care. <laughs> Great. IQ is fantastic. By the way, headings. I'm getting a little worried. No. I think I don't have any hair, just like Jiggy. We can't have our heads held up. There's nothing to hold on to. Without Trump interfering or supporting a new generation of American so-called conservatives, they are not conservatives, as we said. They are Trumpists. Yeah. There is no conservative party, there's only a Trump party. Correct. And as George said, 20% of the so-called Republicans are actually rhinos. It, no, yeah. uh, it's not a contest. I would say it's probably even less than that. Look, I, I think it boils down like this. I think with what the Republicans have done to President Trump, the yeah. ultimate betrayal of the President of the United States who they would not be back in power without. Let's not forget that. What they have done to him, and especially, of course, Mitch McConnell and the seven fake Republicans that voted to <laughs> convict him, even after hearing the excellent job that the lawyers did, where they showed, you know, go out and fight, do this, fight, fight, fight. I mean, it was just an amazing job that uh, the lawyers did. But if you put all that together, I believe he had 85 to 90 million votes. I've said this on your show, and I'll say it again. Yep. If he was to start the Patriot Party tomorrow, and he incorporated it, and he got it going, and he said, okay, everybody, we've got the Patriot Party here, I guarantee you within a 90-day period, you'd have at least 50 to 60 million people that were former Republicans that would join that party. You would immediately put yourself in position as the dominant party in the United States of America. That's number one. Number two, you would revitalize uh, and re-engage and reignite, if you will, conservative patriots, national populists, Trump supporters that are dejected, that are feeling low, that are feeling terrible because their voices aren't heard, they're being censored, their president had the election stolen from them, and you would immediately energize those people to fight and get ready to start working very hard for 2022. Now, the reality is, is that, yes, there's going to be 10 to 15 percent of these rhino establishment Republicans that are never going to join on. Who cares? It's not going to split the vote because, trust me, you, there's no vote to split. I talk to millions of people. I, I Not millions of people, but I talk to people all the time. People watch me, and I hear it all the time. I'll never vote for the Republican Party ever again because of what they did. And, of course, a lot of that is a caveat of hey, we've got to fix the voter fraud before we would even consider voting again. So this is a prime opportunity for President Trump to step up and honestly save the country by starting a third party. Because you're going to get these, uh, and I don't even want to use the word blue dog or conservative Democrats because they really don't really dis exist anymore, but you'll get some Democrats to come over, you'll get independents to come over, you'll get libertarians to come over, you'll get many other people to come over that will then compensate for the establishment people that aren't going to come over, and you're going to have the majority, and you're going to do well, and who's not going to want to vote for America first and putting America first? It's a great message. It's a common denominator for the American people. People are going to want to vote and support people that support the country. So I think it's a grand opportunity. And I think you couple that with Trump social media, Trump television, and you actually create a shadow government, just as Barack Hussein, Sotero, Marshall Davis, Obama did when President Trump was in office. You have a shadow government working besides the regular government, 
and you call them out on every little thing that they do. You keep them in check. You um, f uh, certainly encourage state rights to assert themselves over the federal government so that we can put the executive branch in check. I think there's a lot of things we can do. But again, a lot of it also stems with cleaning up the voter rolls, getting rid of dead voters, getting rid of duplicate voters, getting rid of voters that have a P.O. box or a cement factory as their address. We've got to be civically active and then, of course, become precinct committee members, state representatives, House members for the state. We need to get MAGA elected into these positions so that we can then change voter uh, rules and laws in time for 2022 and 2024. We've got to be civically active because if we sit back and allow the left to continue with their archaic, you know, uh, fraudulent ways, then we're never going to get back into power, regardless of whether there's a third party or not. So, Ed, what, 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 what do you make of this, Ed Martin? I, I agree with that. I would say I would say two two observations. I mean, I think you know someone mentioned earlier uh, Phyllis Schlafly, our organization, and I could just tell you that um, you know when Phyllis died in in, uh, in September of 2016, one of the things she said to us was, um, "I don't I don't want my organization to turn into a think tank. It's yes. supposed to be a political a, gr a group that knows politics and makes a difference. That's what we do." Um, but yep. I think after yep. Trump after Trump loses, it's um. um you know, it was tough. We were doing a lot of things to help Trump do better at, in office and also support what he did. And I think that was now we're kind of regrouping. Right. And I, what you just said, I agree with. I'd make two observations. though. one is this. I don't think that we can win again if we don't figure out how to beat back. And it's a big challenge, but I'll say it beat back what I call the narrative machine. Right now, the narrative machine is the greatest colossus. Leviathan, whatever the phrase you want in human history. It's yeah. big tech with big media with big yes. government. And they are the th they yep. the big tech is changing our brains with neuroscience. Big media is 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 brainwashing people through especially visual images, but also because of the the demographic and they actually are the ones that are really shaping our voters because they're communicating to people, you know, 50 and over on cable TV. And then the big government, both parties, is used to control us and to further the narrative. And so the best example I can give, we all know now that the Russia hoax was an extraordinary hoax. Big tech, yep. big media, and big government, the Mueller investigation, used against us to, to get a lie, the Russia hoax, to become a truth, the Russia hoax. The, the fine people hoax in Charlottesville, total lie. The president called fine people neo-Nazis. It's a lie. But it was big tech, big media, and also big government used to do that. Now... The Pelo I call it the Pelosi insurrection hoax. I was there on January 1st. I wasn't in the Capitol. I went back to my office, but I was there for all of it. And now I look at it and I see all the markings of a significant hoax, Pelosi and the, and the, and the left. And it's big tech, big media, yes. and, and, and the big government. We're now going to have big government used to hammer home that this was a white supremacy, neo-Nazi armed inter insurrection. <laughs> yes. All of that is false. All of it. And so, and why are they doing it? One is they know what gets ratings on TV is white supremacy and race and all that. And, they, and, the, and the communists and the Marxists want it. And the big government, and, and Pelosi knows she can't communicate in 2022 on her record. She's got to communicate on Nazis are here and Orange Man bad and all that. <laughs> yes, yes. We're, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch this go down, and we're gonna be fighting around the edges. And here, and, and the other thing that Pelosi is distracting from is what happened in the fall. Whether the election was stolen or not is not yet proven. But what is proven yes. is it was the it was one of the most poorly run and most questionable elections. And what's proven is that the American people, including Democrats, don't have confidence in our election. That's proven. So now you say, isn't yep. that the issue we ought to be discussing? And they don't want to do that because they want to move on. They, they want to use it again later if they need to, but they don't certainly don't want to. It's like the opposite of Hillary. Hillary knew she lost, so she said Russia, Russia, Russia to delegitimize de 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 Trump. In this case, Biden didn't win, but we're not getting a chance to delegitimize him because we're going to talk about insurrection and a 9-11 commission. So my first observation is, guys, I'm not sure that we can beat the narrative machine today. And, and anyone who's talking about anything else, 
it to me is 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 missing the point. The second thing I will say is, I do think that the 74 million, 84 million, whatever number, are ready to take direction. The problem I have with Trump, he's never been a good political organizer. He really doesn't know or care. His people are ridiculously poor at it. And so when you talk about precinct captains, when you talk, Donald Trump did not drain the RNC. In fact, he empowered the same bastards who made millions and tens of millions off of the, the previous decade to be more in charge. They're making more money than ever. The same consultants, the same people, the same oh, yeah. data trust, right? So, so he doesn't really know how to do it. He knows how to get uh, clicks. He knows how to get ratings. He doesn't know how to get pre. He's not Ron Paul. Remember when Ron Paul's guys got really organized and they were starting to take over committees, precinct committees, and they were really good. It was really impressive in various places. It was sort of. It was not only short lived. It was sort of only regional, right? There were pockets of it, but they yeah. were doing that. Trump hasn't shown an, a, a propensity for understanding the political organizing part. And the question I have and I think a lot about is who can be the leader? Because we do need some leaders to rise. And I'll tell you one name. One name that I think would be good is, you know, Flynn. If General Flynn came in and said, hey, guys, we're going to do something this way. You know, I think somebody like DeSantis, if he decides to run for president and does it early, could become a galvanizing figure. I'm not sure I trust him. He's a little too much of a politician. But but I mean, I think he's you know, we're going to have to have some some people uh, that, that the dynamics going to have to be different than the old days where you just raise one hundred million dollars and run in the yeah. Iowa caucus. I yeah. guarantee you will lose. I was on the RNC. I watched them getting ready to lose again. And I then and then Trump came out of the you know from the from the side and, and saved us. But we will never win an election where we run a candidate who re needs $150 million to run in Iowa and New Hampshire, because that person will have to be owned and beholden by the powers that be. Scott Walker, Jeb Bush were the two that were right. trying. And, and yeah. so that's where that's the problem. It, 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 that's the dynamic I see, the two the two tensions that we've got to somehow find our way around. Well, uh, well, Ed, as go, go, go ahead, Don. Go ahead, Don. Oh, I, I have to say that's one of the best analysis I've heard in a long time. You're to be congratulated. <laughs> no, I'm being very serious. Um, you've laid out a blueprint. You, you've laid it out, my friend. It's uh, it's 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 amazing. So, so Ed, uh, before we let you go, my friend, how do we uh, get in touch with you online and uh, Eagle Forum and everything? What's happened? I just keep hearing a cell phone. What? 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 what, what? Whose cell phone is that? <laughs> Not mine. Maybe, maybe it's IQ. Who knows? But uh, but Ed, uh, before we let you go, how do we uh, get in touch with you for Eagle Forum and everything else? I think we may have lost Ed. No, it must have been his. That must have oh, been I, his I, cell phone. I, 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 not me. I, I put mine on mute in case it was me, but it wasn't. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you for, thank you for that question. Here's the thing. A couple ways. First of all, I'd love to have anyone that wants to email me directly. Uh, I'm, email is my best, uh, you know, my best media. Ed at phyllisschlafly.com. Ed at phyllisschlafly.com. Phyllisschlafly.com is our website. Uh, but I do a lot of radio. I do a lot of communicating. Um, so if you go to proamericareport.com, proamericareport.com, there's a lot of what I do there, and I'm on Twitter, Eagle Ed Martin. I'm on Parlor and all the different places. But um, you know, uh, phyllisschlafly.com is really our, our hub, uh, and then ProAmericaReport.com for what Ed Martin is up to. Awesome, awesome. Well, Ed, you you are you are tremendous, my friend. Thank you. Well, anytime I can be on or help you guys, I'm happy to do it. Thank you for your but, patience. Ed, can, can I just ask you one quick question? How could you, you permit such a terrible uh, film? As they they did of her. Oh, uh, Mrs. America, yeah, Mrs. America, yeah. It was um, well, you know, one thing we did with that. Thank you for asking. Is if you go to realmrsamerica.com, we we deconstructed their film, and um, and so yes, it was. Um, the only good news is, you know, the, the, uh, and and the question is about real Mrs. Amer excuse me, Mrs. America, which was a fifty million dollar. FX series that was run on Hulu, and it was seven or eight hours. It was full of lies. But the best news is they had to cover the main uh, headline, which was Phyllis Schlafly takes on all of America and wins on the ERA. So they had to at least cover the fact that she won 
in the fight against the liberals and the establishment. But um, on, at realmrsamerica.com, we we did a series of videos deconstructing. They just blatantly lied. You know, of course, we have the they have a debate where they make it look like Phyllis messed up. And in the actual debate, which we have the video of, it was the woman, the feminist who messed up the exact opposite of what occurred is of what they said occurred. <laughs> of what of occurred. course. It's classic liberal stuff. So, of course. Yeah. Real real Mrs. America dot com. Fantastic. Right. Well, uh, thank you. I, I appreciate you doing this, Ed, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. Too. Thank you, guys. See ya. Thank you, my friend. There he goes, Ed Martin. And uh, we are going to get our next uh, guest in here, which, which, which we're, 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 we're going to go from conservative politics to health. <laughs> all, all, you know, it, it, it's like IQ always says. He loves this show because he never knows what the hell we're going to have on. <laughs> it's always great but that trio of people you know, you do not know look at this dr cass ingram with us the fantastic dr cass ingram how are you sir yeah and i'm not how about you i uh miss durham I, I think she's got to bring a prop in. i gotta show a prop you've got a prop you've yeah, you've, because I just you've got props look at this 